his influence on my on my work and and on life has been has been strong and I think it's that way for a lot of his students. I mean he is you know amazingly well known and amazingly respected as an artist. But when he's in the art department, he's just one of us. I've been very much influenced by, by his artwork, his, his subject matter and his approach to it. The praise is directed toward this man, Wayne Tebow, who has long been recognized as one of the world's most prominent modern artists. At age 87, Tebow's hand is still on the brush, producing brilliant images on canvas. The oil that he masterfully spreads on cloth is vibrant. What brought Thibault his early acclaim were his depictions of cafeteria-style foods, the cakes, pies, hot dogs, and other staples of the American diet. Thibault has painted San Francisco cityscapes of plunging and careening streets. His move to figure paintings in the 1960s and later his abstract landscapes highlight Thibault's brilliant palette of color, light, and shadow. His signature style? The rich, smooth dragging of paint across a surface. One of his cityscapes is this one titled Apartment Hill, completed in 1980. When you look back at this, and you look at it, what do you say to yourself? You say, good work? You say... I see it differently than when I painted it. Huh. And uh, that's a phenomenon which is very interesting. You wish you could see it when you do it, like you're going to see it a month later. Remember when someone gives an idea like I've Despite his monumental presence as an artist, Tebow is still a bright light on the Davis campus, where he came in 1960 to join the faculty of the art department. Though officially retired since 1991, he teaches one class each academic year. As much as anything, it keeps this professor emeritus of art on his creative toes. Lucy Poles, the art department chair at UC Davis, says many of the students who take his classes have no idea how important Thibault is to the art world. They have no clue. And we don't make a big deal about it because Wayne wants to teach students who want to learn. They, he doesn't want a bunch of groupies in his classes. Paul says that Thibault's teaching is engaging and exciting. I say, I'm just going to go in for five minutes and then I can't leave because I'll go in there and he starts talking about Michelangelo's David, the sculpture, the toe. And all of a sudden I'm like, I can't leave till I hear the rest of the Bob, the toe. Thibault was only a teenager when he got his first break in the art world. He took a job as an animator for Walt Disney Studios. When World War II started, the young artist joined the U.S. Army Air Corps and was assigned to Mather Field outside of Sacramento. There he spent the war years cartooning for service publications. He received his bachelor's degree in art at Sacramento State in 1951. While working on his master's there, he began teaching at Sacramento Junior College. In 1960, he began his long teaching career at UC Davis. There he became part of a quirky bunch of art faculty. It was a group of iconoclastic, talented young artists on their way up, and yet deeply committed to teaching. Thibault joined sculptors Robert Arneson and Manuel Neri, painter William T. Wiley, and funk artist Roy DeForest. Artist Michael Tompkins was a student at UC Davis at that time. He remembers, in particular, Wayne Thibault's teaching techniques. He was very interested in the language of painting and drawing. Uh, in other words, um, uh, the way, physically the way that you moved a brush around, the, the physicality of paint, this goopy stuff, you know, and how do you make that work, how do you make color work. The Crocker Art Museum in Sacramento was the first gallery to offer a Thibault exhibition in 1951. To be at a museum where we have a wealth of Thibault because we were in his community where he was located early on in his career before the acclaim be became such as it is, it's terrific. It didn't take long before his exhibits began drawing large audiences at the national and international levels. His art has received numerous first place prizes and awards. Today his work can be found in private collections and on display at major museums across the country. And yet Wayne Thibault doesn't fit the mold. Many famous artists have gigantic egos, dress unconventionally, or display bizarre behavior. Not Thibault. He's self-effacing, quick-witted, and a masterful storyteller. 
So he came up to me and he said, uh, Mr. Tebow, I don't understand this grade you gave me. And I said, well, it's an F. <laughs> and he says, I know, but what does that mean? I says, it means you're flunking a class. He says, flunking? How can anybody flunk art? <laughs> Tebow's son Matt said he grew up in a home where his stepfather always was drawing. He says Tebow never works from photographs, believing that photographic images present a vision that differs too greatly from what the human eye sees. He's put a strong emphasis on, on the underlying drawing of it, so he's, he's always preached about drawing as the fundamentals. You know, a lot of students, they just want to paint, and I think uh, I've taken that uh, away from what I've learned from him. Bolt, who also has been his father's longtime business agent, says his dad attacks the canvas every day. Even on weekends, he paints in his Sacramento studio. He does tennis uh, about three times a week, and then he goes to his studio every day, just stops for lunch and goes right back to work. Recently, Tebow contributed a collection of paintings, drawings, and sketches to the UC Davis Art Department, valued at more than $850,000. These will be valuable teaching tools for students. And you had mentioned that art is one of the dirtiest words in our culture. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Well, I think it's all mucked up with everybody's expectancy, everybody's misassignment. Uh, since we don't know what it is, people can call anything art. I mean, there are all kinds of painting, and all of it good. All painting does usually is to do something positive for the most part. It covers up bad looking walls. It, it entrances us. It does all kinds of things. It makes little worlds for us to reimagine. You said that uh, painting is a lot of hard work. Yes. Uh, is it physically tiring? Is it mentally exhausting? It's pain and pleasure. Matisse says the best thing when he says work is a paradise, but you have to know how to enter that paradise. If everybody takes on the idea that work can be something really meaningful and offer something in addition to that pleasurable, then you have a kind of paradise. Tebow has painted a wide range of subjects, a blend of realism and abstraction. His experiences as an animator, teacher, and observer of life seems to enrich his painting, his students, and the art world. My assumption, Mr. Tebow, is that you have as much passion for what you do today as you did when you started out. I think so. I hope so. I feel like I do. <laughs> it's hard to make any, anything having to do with self-assessment. I'm sure lucky to be able to do it.